G'day, Ben from Duck Plain Chicken here with the third video in this uh, Regult build by Hasegawa. So in this video, we're gonna be looking at continuing with the wiring. Next thing is to move on to the thrusters that are at the side of the, so they sit on the side of the, the head or the main uh, cockpit. This is probably the area that has caused me the most grief. <laughs> And I think a lot of it has got to do with just the way they've sort of made this piece up. It's quite odd, um, and I'm not sure why they've done it the way they have. But essentially, this grey bit here is on a polycap, but there's very little movement there. Like, there's no sort of real rhyme or reason as to why they've used a polycap to hold it in place. Um, apart from the fact that it's uh, nice and easy, but it would have been a lot easier if this was a piece that was just sort of static in place and locked into the other parts in some way. So that's where this has caused me all grief. And I really wanted to light these up because I think, you know, if I'm going to bother of lighting up the thrusters on the legs, I need to light these guys up too. So what I'm going to do is show you the one that I've done so far and I should have been prepared earlier and actually fed these wires through and I'll talk about what I've ended up doing in order to make it happen but it was worth pursuing because I think the end result is actually pretty good. Uh, look at that. Make sure if I turn the overhead light off. There we go, now we're talking. So that's the final effect and I'm pretty happy with that, but it takes a lot of messing around in order to make that happen. So first of all, let's talk about the, the molding of this. So you can see it's got these rings on it and this is probably where I should you know, bite the bullet and get myself a, a 3D printer and I could have printed out those rings as separate pieces but it's alright I found a way around it and if we have a look here what I've done is and this is only blue tacked in place that's why it looks like it's crooked at the moment like tweezers so what I've done is if I take this off, so this is just blue tacked in place, I'll talk about that in a minute. But what I've done is I've got a bit of clear, uh, clear styrene and I have sanded it down so it's a nice matte finish. So that helps diffuse the light and um, there's actually a very small sort of light box in there that with the LED, you might just be able to see the LED there. So it's actually quite bright. You know, it's got a bit of a hot spot, but um, sanding down the styrene made a big difference. Um, so I'll take this off. And what I've done is I've pretty much completely gutted this. I've got rid of the, um, got rid of the poly cap and I've used um, magnets to hold it in place. The reason I've used magnets, and you don't have to, you could technically just sort of glue it in place, but the reason I've sort of used magnets is because I wanna paint this separately, and with feeding the wire through, I thought it's just gonna be a bit easier for me to sort of set up the magnets. So that's what I've done, and they hold in place pretty well. Um, you know, it's um, a pretty clean solution. If I want to at a later date, I can always glue it in place. But a lot of it was around me because I was sort of taking this off and checking it for light leaks and all that sort of thing. So I just thought magnets would be easier. So if we have a look at the back here, you can see we've got um, essentially a, a little light box uh, sitting behind the uh, behind the thruster and that's probably where all the work went into because the shape of this compared to the shape of what's in here it doesn't give you a lot of space for a light box um, 
to sort of hold the LED in place and prevent any light leaking out the sides. So that's probably where I you know, spent most time. Now, as far as the, instead of you know, 3D printing rings and sticking them onto the uh, clear styrene here, what I did was I used one of these. Now, this comes from a detail part set from, um, let's see who makes this, oh, this is Bandai one. Uh, so these are sort of clear lens uh, kits are just sort of, um, you know, extra pieces you can sort of detail up your gunpla with. And it's one of these uh, bracket things that sort of hold the lens in place. So what I did was take one of these and drilled a 2mm hole through the centre of it. And you know, that's what you've got there. So I can paint that up separately and then I can just sort of super glue it onto the styrene there. So the styrene, it is just a sort of a clear bit of styrene. I took a very coarse sanding sponge and sanded it on both sides. And I found that that uh, gives a really good diffuse light. Now, when we look at the piece that hasn't been modified yet, what I do is I grind out the whole interior. So this is peg on the back, I can cut that off. And then, yeah, I can literally just grind out that whole center there so that uh, I can put in place the clear bit of styrene along with the little detail. Now on the inside of this part, I get rid of the, um, get rid of the poly cap. So. so you can see there's a sort of strange setup here where you've got uh, this piece holding the, holding the poly cap in place. I'll get rid of that. And what you'll notice is on the one I modified, I've actually cut this right back as well. So I'm just going to do that pretty roughly with a pair of snips. And this is not seen, so it doesn't matter if it's rough. Now I also use this to feed the wires through, but you can see there's a, uh, there's a wall at the back there, so I'll just cut that. There we go, so now there's a gap that the wires can go through. This part, I'll leave that in place, and in fact I'll end up gluing that, um, because that is what holds this peg in place, so this is important. The peg's quite narrow, so I didn't want to drill a hole through it in order to get the wires coming through. So what I'm going to do is drill another hole. Maybe just have a look at sort of this one here, you can sort of see roughly where it's located. Um, and it'll basically be just below this peg. So I'm just using a two mil drill. And this will be used to feed the wire out through the uh, side thruster and into the head where the battery will be stored. Perfectly centered, but it's all right, no one will see it. All right, so I'm just checking against the uh, what we've got here. All right, the next thing I do is shave these down, gives me a bit more space. All right, so I think that's pretty much ready to go. Put that in place. Now the next thing is the magnets and how I do the magnets. So at the moment, there's nothing holding the thruster in place. So it's just loose there. So this is where I need to put the magnets in. And what I will do is take this apart again. And you can see based on this one, there are, I use three magnets on the base. And of course I use three magnets on here. So the way that I do magnets is that I use the two mil diameter magnets by two mil. So this is what they look like, they're just rare earth magnets. These are really good. 
the first thing you want to do is mark where you're going to drill a hole so because these are two mil diameter what i'm using is a 1.9 millimeter drill bit and what that allows me to do is essentially use a pressure fit to put them in so i could just put a bit of super glue at the back of them if i need to but essentially they're going to be mainly pressure fit now just using the so you can't see that. I'm just using my knife to basically give me a center hole as reference. So I've got a 1.9, um, which is slightly, yeah, slightly smaller diameter than the actual magnet. But this plastic's actually got a bit of give in it, so. Uh, and actually force the magnet into the hole and uh, it holds in there pretty tight so I'll sort of squeeze it in there to get it started and then I've just got a pair of uh, you know, sort of pair of pliers and I can just force that in there nice and flush to the surface and on the back if I need to I can just put a dab of super glue in there just to uh, make sure it doesn't sort of pop through but it's not taking any weight or anything like that so it's actually probably going to be fine just sitting there. I think I might grind this all this stuff out first before I do the, uh, the magnet in here. Alright so in order to match up the magnet of, uh, that's in, in place here. I actually use, um, these are two mil diameter, but they're only one mil deep. So I can sort of put that in here and, uh, yeah, it should match up okay. So first of all, I've got to work out where it needs to go. It looks like it needs to go very much towards the top. Alright, so it's going to go near somewhere. Alright, now you need to be very careful about um, the polarity of magnets because <laughs> if you get them around the wrong way they actually repel. Um, so put a black mark on it, that'll probably help. So the black mark needs to be facing up. Let's do it that way. I'm sure I can go through all this rigmarole uh, doing the other one, but anyway. I need some super glue on it quick. Now the other mate mistake I've made in the past is I use these little um, bottles there, like dropper bottles for uh, the um, accelerator the super glue accelerator problem is they've got a metal tip on them so of course when i'm using around magnets magnets are attracted to it straight away so i have to sort of drip it from um high up so so the magnet doesn't you know attach itself to the nozzle <laughs> no. All right, let's see how I did. Let's see if I got the uh, go around the right way. Yeah, it's promising. All right, that's a good start. So the next thing is, if I put this on here, you can see that it actually holds it too high. There's this big gap in the bottom. So what I need is a couple of magnets at the bottom just to pull it down a little bit. Which is what I did on the other one. Now, the other two magnets I'm going to put on this piece won't come until after I've done the um, after I've done the, the light box that fits in there, just because I found that easier last time. 
in order to create a light box in this particular area I've taken a piece of uh, 0.5 mil styrene and I need something to curve it around so let's This is to build the wall around. Now, because of the, the nature of the profile of this, the, uh, the light box actually has to go on a bit of a, uh, a slope. So I actually need to sort of um, cut it down on one side. Let me sort of do that here, I think. See how it's going to sort of dip down towards this end. And if we look at the profile, it sort of here yeah, dips down a bit. And that's just because of the way it interacts with the bottom of this piece. So it took me a while to sort of get my head around of what was going on, what was uh, blocking it. And I think what I might do is give it a tape to hold it in place. I think that's what I did last time. So now I should be able to just drop some extra thin cement in there and hopefully it holds. dry like I said this is probably the fiddliest part everything else was sort of you know I could work with it and um, find a way around things these side thrusters or the princess layer buns are pain in the neck pain in the neck it's all musical cheers all right I'll let that dry and I'll come back once that's done Okay, the little wall that I've put around the thruster opening as part of the sort of light box. Uh, that's all been glued in place and I've also trimmed it down a little bit just so it uh, it fits on here, no worries. Because you just need to be careful it doesn't interfere with the thruster sitting up tied up against the, the body piece. So the next thing to do is to put in the diffuser, which is, like I mentioned before, just a piece of clear styrene that I have sanded substantially just with a really coarse sanding sponge. And that will drop in place. I sort of cut it to size. And what I'm gonna do is just use a bit of uh, UV resin to set it in place. The uh, one thing I do find with this resin is that you only need a little bit of it. If you put sort of too much in, it takes a lot longer to cure. So it can be a bit problematic. All right, so now that's in place, the next thing I've done is I've cut out a little bit of styrene. Again, this is 0.5 millimeter styrene sheet. I've cut a two mil hole in the middle of it. And what I'll do is I'll put an LED through um, and it will sit something like that. So I'll we'll flip it over. You can sort of see where that hole is. And of course this will all be sort of glued in place and sealed up and everything so that, um, so that there's no light leaking. So now I need LED. Actually, before before I glue this LED down, I'm glad I remembered. What I need to do is um, color it first. So I'm just going to use the same blue I did for the leg thrusters, X23, to me a clear blue. And again, I'm just going to dunk it in. I'm 
I'm gonna have to let that dry for a bit before I actually uh, set it in place. So here we have the, the Frosted Parlor diffuser and then this is going to be sort of dried and glued in the middle there like that. Now these um, these lens holders, they don't actually come with a hole in them, so you do need to drill a hole out. So first thing I'm going to do is trim out the one I'm using, and the, for you, you know, following along, I'm cutting out the number ones, which are the largest uh, lens holders. So trim them out. Now, normally when I'm drilling a hole, especially where it's really important that it's centered, I'll use the, the blade to sort of uh, put a center punch in. All right, so I'm gonna take my pin vise and put a two millimeter drill bit in. And then I'm just gonna slowly drill through it. Okay, so you can see it is Nice and centered, and so that's ready to go. And what I'll do is I'll paint that first before I stick it in place because what I need to do is mask the frosted area so that I can paint the rest of the thrusters around. So, to show you what I've done on the other one, I've actually just used blue tack, I've sort of filled it in, in the bottom there. It's nice and easy to sort of set up, just use a toothpick to put it in place. It's a bit easier than tape and it works just as well. So the blue, clear blue paint that I have put on the end of this LED is now um, dry and should be ready to go. So it's a little bit hard to tell on the screen, but it is, um, it is blue. So of course I've got the diffuser in place, the little wall for the light box. The next thing is to take this backing piece and attach the LED to it. Let's take that into place. I do want to make sure I've still got the LED pointing in the direction that I want. Which I do. So I reckon I can drop some resin over that. It's a probably a good point to talk about if, uh, if any of you are interested in sort of any, you know, you want me to give more detail, or less detail on my builds, then I'm more than happy to um, hear what you uh, hear what you think. I am very grateful to the people who leave comments on my videos and certainly I've had a, a lot of very kind words about my builds and I, I do very much appreciate that. And I'm just happy that there's, uh, there's a few of you out there who are actually interested in what I do. It makes it all worthwhile. I'm going to put a bit of resin on the back as well and then a little bit of tape as well just to sort of keep it all in place. The main thing, my experience with these LEDs is that where the wires are soldered to the back of the LED, it's actually its weakest, weakest spot. And if you sort of bend it back a couple of times well, even once it can break. So by putting a bit of resin on it, or well, you could use super glue and a bit of tape, uh, sort of holds it all in place and prevents it from, from breaking. Okay, now the most important thing is what does it look like when it's in place and the LED is turned on. So, 
I need to temporarily put the back on and I'm just going to uh, pin it down with some blue tech if I can find my blue tech. Way too much stuff on my workspace at the moment. Alright, there we go. That's nice and centered. And then once we drop one of these in, try and get it sort of centered, but you get a bit of an idea of how it's going to look. Yeah, so that's good. That's good. So while I've got it semi sort of in place, I might use a bit of Tamiya extra thin and I'm going to use the quick setting stuff just to sort of tack it in place and then I can uh, I can use the the stronger stuff. Whew. I really like this applicator, the Revell Contact to Cement. And I tend to use if I need thicker styrene cement. Use this stuff just because I really like the applicator. All right, so I'm just going to use a bit of tape to hold that down while it sort of sets. And then what we'll do is we'll go in there with uh, some of the, again, some of the uh, fabric paint and that will help light block it. And the reason why light blocking is so important, if I show the other one, because there are sort of slight gaps around here. Now, if I was to glue this in place, I could probably deal with, you know, deal with the gaps, but uh, given that I've sort of just magnetized it, I think it's going to be easier for me to uh, just use the fabric paint and make sure this whole unit is properly light blocked and that means when it goes in here it's not going to sort of you know you're not going to have light bleed out the sides so I'm going to leave that to dry and then uh, before I do the light blocking I need to put in a couple more magnets so just for the bottom of the holder of the the thruster in here so I'll come back when that's all dried and ready to go and show you that process. Okay, the back of the light box on the, the thruster here is now uh, dried. So now I need to put two magnets, one in here and one on this side as well. So again, I'm using these uh, two mil diameter by two mil rear earth magnets and the way I'm doing this is I'm going to pick up one of these throw it in the corner there so this is where I get the super glue out and I'm just trying to make sure the super glue is all the way around the magnet. And then I can take my accelerator and try and drop this from a distance so that the magnet doesn't stick to the nozzle. And that missed. sort of see the way I'm trying to orient them so they're pointing pointing out okay I think we're probably good to go there just wiping up all the excess accelerator. The next bit is to basically work out where the magnets need to go on this part here. So we can see that the magnet is working at the top, but it is pulling it up. 
So what I need to do now is work out which polarity and I can actually feel that pushing away so that's uh, yeah, so it definitely needs to go in that way I reckon we put the hole in here somewhere probably about there now I'm eyeballing a lot of this Hopefully the magnets will be strong enough to uh, to affect it. If not, we will have to come up with something else. All right. So again, I'm using the trick of using a 1.9 millimeter drill. So I'm going to drill these holes out. Get in there. So you want it nice and flush on the side, so it sticks up a little bit on the inside, but that's all right. And already, so I feel that working a bit better. Pull down on this edge here a little bit better. Um, there's a little bit of a gap at the top. You know, it's either a gap at the top or a gap at the bottom, but I think that's the design of the piece. And at the end of the day, it is going to be mounted on that side like that. So it'll be interesting to see how much you sort of see. But that's as good as it's going to get for me so I'll take it so what I'll do um, off camera is maybe put a little bit of super glue on these magnets here just to keep them in place I will glue this around this edge I've actually already done that with uh, this one I haven't uh, cleaned it up yet but this is now glued I'll fix this seam here, make it nice and smooth, and now it's sort of uh, ready to go. All right, the final bit to do is light block all of this. And again, I'm going to use my favorite, I'm going to use the uh, tulip again, and I'm going to cover it in this black paint to light block it. So the whole thing will then be ready for painting all I have to do is mask off the diffuser part of the part of the assembly yeah a bit where I really have to concentrate is sort of around the edges of course where it's sort of joined up it doesn't matter if I go over the magnets when you're light blocking of course it doesn't matter how messy you are if you're not going to see the you know, the parts that have been light blocked Okay, yeah, well, looks ugly, but it is functional, and that's the main thing. I'll just cover that, and so I'll do the the other one as well, because I haven't, uh, haven't done this one yet. And then we'll be done with the thrust, the side thrusters. The final bit of lighting I want to talk about is the centre eye piece. That's sort of how it sits. In the uh, on the body this is made up of sort of several parts and the great thing is is that you can just sort of pop them out from the back and the other really cool thing is it comes with a hole ready to put a light in so again just using the same LEDs I've been all along the warm white ones and given that this has the red lens I don't need to worry about sort of giving it a colour. So I'm just going to feed it through the hole 
so it's going to stay there. I think what I'll do is something like that. Add the LED right in the center there. And then to get everything prepared, again, I'm just going to use a little bit of uh, UV resin. So, what I'm going to do is get a little bit of resin. And then quickly hit it with the UV light. Okay, so let's have a quick look at how this Yeah, look at that. That's going to be intense. That's good, I like that. Alright, so next thing is... I'm going to put a little bit of resin on the back as well. And then just for good measure, I'm going to put a little bit of tape over it as well. Just to take up any of the tension on the wires. I don't actually accidentally put my elbow in it like I've done before. And yeah, let's get all this back in place and uh, see how it looks. Oh yeah! That is cool. It's actually coming out pretty well on camera but uh, it looks even better in real life so... That was probably the easiest bit of lighting on this, on this whole kit. <laughs> and it's going to look most awesome. So, um, yeah, that's uh, kind of the last thing I wanted to show you. What I might do is kind of try and get everything together just as a bit of a summary of, uh, yeah, all the wiring stuff that's done. So I'm going to admit I've been caught out here. I think I really believe that this kit was going to be pretty straightforward to light and it turned into something a whole lot more complex than I ever thought it could be. But anyway, just to wrap up sort of this um, part of the, you know, the wiring and everything, I can't sort of show you all lit up at once because I sort of haven't finished, but I think at this stage it'll give you a good idea of what's going on. So first of all, I've just kind of mocked everything up just to sort of show what some of these going to look like. So let's start with the uh, back piece. So you can sort of get an idea what that's going to look like. That's going to look pretty cool. There's a bit of light bleed out the sides, but that'll uh, be alright once the piece is primed. And, you know, and of course the, uh, the door sort of goes on the top there. Also did both of the legs, so we've got the two lights on either side of the base there, and also underneath the thruster. That's pretty subtle that one, but that's all right. It's still there. The part that caused me the most grief was these uh, side thrusters. But they are all lit up now. And of course, just the way I'm going to sort of house the battery and everything, I've got that all sort of sorted with the, the switch and the, you know, the magnetized door. Get that around the right way. So I'm pretty happy with that solution. And then finally, I think probably the coolest bit of the lighting um, and certainly one of the easiest bits to do is the center eye. So that looks really cool. Really happy with that. So now you sort of, you know, you can see how I've used 15 LEDs while there's so many in there. And hopefully when I get it all together, it will, um, yeah, it'll look pretty good. So next video will all be about painting. Of course, I have to mask over the LEDs, the lights that I've sort of set up ready to go. So I don't think the painting will be too difficult. Certainly now the way I've done the lighting, it'll be a little bit of masking around the LEDs, around the lights. Everything else should be reasonably straightforward. Of course, with the legs, I'm gonna to have to paint you know, this gray bit first, seal all that up, deal with the seams, and then um, put the white over it and mask that off. But I think painting will be pretty straightforward. Till then, I'll catch you later.